Hey YouTube, my quick video on how to replace a mass airflow sensor on a 2004 Honda Accord. Uh, the reason I'm doing this is because yesterday I made a video on how to use an OBD2 scanner and it came up with five different codes. Uh, four codes, one pending. Uh, the codes that I came up with is P1121, P0122, P1129, P0102. Uh, and what it is is uh, the TPS, another TPS code, the map sensor, and the mass airflow sensor. Uh, yesterday, I did a replacement video on the TPS, the throttle positioning sensor. I cleared the codes yesterday. The only one that's coming up again today is this one, the mass airflow sensor. But the map sensor is what's also coming up. Uh, so what we're going to do is check the mass airflow first things first. And then we're going to move on to the map sensor. But this video is just going to be about the mass airflow sensor. So to get started, all you're going to need is a Phillips screwdriver and remove these two Phillips heads. First you want to do is remove the pigtail connection and then get your Phillips and just remove them like that. You want to be careful and not drop the screws like I did. <laughs> just like so. It's all right. We'll get them out right now. Uh, and here comes the airflow sensor and it looks pretty clean. If you could really see in here, but they look pretty clean. But we're gonna clean it off and see if it works. And if it doesn't, the sensor is gonna need to be replaced. All right. So, like I said, you want to be careful with your screws. You you don't want to be like I did and drop them in there because then you're gonna need a nifty little contraption like the one I have here with a magnet. So you're able to pull out and pick up. <laughs> I got this nifty little flashlight and it's a uh, extender with a magnet at the end and swivel. It's pretty cool. I think it was like 10 bucks at AutoZone. It's worth it. Uh, I've never really had to use it until like right now. <laughs> Try to use the flashlight, but the batteries are dead. Uh, it's pretty cool. So anyways, we're going to go ahead and clean this up some way or another. Alright, the way we're going to clean this is with rubbing alcohol and some Q-tips. What we're going to do is just dip the Q-tips in the alcohol and just rub those sensors, those little contacts there. Uh, so we get them nice and clean just in case they're full of dust. Uh, and they're not picking up anymore. There's a little coil right here too. I don't know if you can see it. So we'll try to clean those out as best as possible. And we'll see if, uh, if it works. If not, then it's going to need to be replaced. And this replacement part's like 70 bucks, I think it was. Sweet. So let's go ahead and clean that off. Alright, all right, I want to put some rubbing alcohol on my Q-tip. Just want to flick it, make sure it doesn't have a lot of rubbing alcohol in there. And just put it in here and wipe it off. Back and forth. Just back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Alright. See if maybe whoop, make sure the string doesn't get stuck in there. <laughs> uh, now we're going to use that little excessive cotton <laughs> to try to reach in there, see if it works. Now we're going to use the dry side and dry it off. All up in here. All that. Get all that. All right. That looks like it's pretty much it. Let's clean this whole thing. Let's 
little ports. See all the dirt that's coming off on the Q-tip. Clean everything. And the reason you want to use rubbing alcohol because it's a great cleaner, and it dries up quick, as you can see. It's like it dries almost instant. Now we just want to rub it off with the dried side. There it is. Let's do these contacts as well. Make sure these contacts are nice and clean. Now it's dried off. And let's go install it back in now. That's it. That's all we're going to do. So let's go ahead and put it back into the car. Alright, so you just want to insert it back the exact same way you took it out. Yes. Yeah. And sunny side, please. Okay. Mmm, they're making breakfast. Yes, sir. Okay. Put the screws back in. Tie them down. Uh, I use my power tools because I'm used to them. I know how to control it, you see. Uh, but I do not suggest you use power tools, especially because you're threading these into plastic. So if you over tighten them, you're screwed. Just like that screw. So you want to keep a Phillips with you handy to finish them off and to actually start them and drive them. Connect it. And that should be it. That's how you replace the mast airflow sensor. Uh, and clean it out but if it does not work we're gonna have to replace it so we'll do the same thing so that's how you replace it <laughs> thank you for watching please like and subscribe don't forget to hit that bell all right let's get out of here before we get kicked out